the live stream was working. This is different. I, I didn't want it to. Uh, let's see here. Okay. All righty. Yes. Okie dokie. So get your papers out, and uh, we are going to talk about your assigned soul. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Just a brief thought about verses 8 and 9. I'm still amazed and I'm shocked at the, at the Baptist Christians, Baptist preachers that believe that works has anything to do with our salvation. I'm just shocked. And it says clearly there we're saved by grace through faith. That's it. And then it's not anything we can do, not of our works, lest any man should boast. Just absolutely clear. And I'm amazed at people that will um, add repentance of their sins or add baptism or add church attendance or just anything. I mean, you say, how do they do that in the Baptist churches? Well, here's what they say. If you don't get baptized, if you don't come to church faithfully, if you don't serve God with your life, then you must not have gotten it when you said you were saved. It must not have been real. And so if they say your works are necessary for us to believe that you got saved in the first place, then they're saying that works is a part of salvation. When people say, if your life doesn't change when you get saved, then you didn't get saved. Again, that's just a back door way of saying that works are necessary for salvation and it's just not so just always make sure that you you understand that now and again i'm i'm mad at anybody anybody in this church that tells people that if you're going to get saved you have to repent of your sins i just i'm just mad at that because that's ridiculous none of us have none of us have repented of all of our sins now some of us have stopped sinning certain sins of course but but repenting you know say well once you know, smoking cigarettes drinking alcohol you know, doing drugs, that, that's, what, that's the sin that sends you to hell. No, all sin sends you to hell, all of the sins. It doesn't matter if it's a lie, a bad thought, laziness, gluttony. I mean, just whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter what the sin is. It's all deserving of hell, and nobody can repent of all of their sins. And we need to stop saying you have to repent of certain sins in order to be saved because it's all of them or nothing. It can't be, it can't be just the ones that we think are bad sins. You know, it's all that stuff. But at any rate... We're saved by grace. That's it, period, through faith, nothing else, not of ourselves, not of works. Now, verse 10 is what I want to focus on today. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The before is before we were born. And often is the case, it could even be before the world was created. It doesn't really matter. But before you were born, God had some good works that he ordained that you should walk in them. And so I'd like to give that a thought with um, the soul winning efforts today. Ten thoughts, ten points. Number one, God has a work for you to perform today. I want you to not think of this good work as something that's supposed to be the big picture of your life. Like, for example, the big picture of my life, God's called me to be the pastor of Hopewell Baptist Church. That obviously is a good work that God wants me to perform, and I'm doing it for 30 years. But there is a good work that God wants me to perform today. So it's not just the big picture good work, it's the everyday good work. So you've got to make sure that in your mind, it's not just that God wants you to live a life for him, generally speaking, it's today. There is a good work that God wants you to perform today. Number two, the greatest work that a Christian can perform is that of leading a lost soul to Christ for salvation. The greatest work that a Christian can perform is that of leading a lost soul to Christ for salvation. There's nothing that compares to it. Nothing. Now, I'm teaching a lesson right now, and that's good. I'll be preaching tonight at 6. That's good. Those of us that serve God in ministry here, whether it's music or children's or Christian school or ushering, um, uh, you know, whatever, 
it's all good, but there is nothing greater as far as a work is concerned than a Christian leading a lost soul to Christ. Nothing greater. I've often said this, that uh, 100 years from now, there's only two things that are going to really matter. I mean, just really. Two things. Number one, where are you? Did you make it to heaven? Number two, who's in heaven with you that you invited that you led to Christ, that you led the way. Who else, is, who else is in heaven that you got to help get here? And again, we know that Jesus does all the saving, but why in the world does God say we're supposed to win souls if there's not something that we could do, right? We're supposed to win souls. We're supposed to point people to the Savior. Daniel 12, 3, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So there's got to be a way that we can turn people to righteousness. And that's obviously through soul winning. So all the good works that we do, all of them are fine. They're not sinful. They're not wrong. But the greatest work that a Christian can perform is that of leading a lost soul to Christ for salvation. There is nothing more important than what you're going to do at ten, uh, what you're going to do at eleven o'clock when we go out soul winning. Nothing more important. Number three, God has already made preparation for your work to be done. God has already made preparation for your work to be done. You see, the truth of the matter is, is that um, God's already set the stage. The preparation is already there. Yesterday. I got a phone call from a chaplain at the hospital. I, I am a chaplain in the marketplace, but I've, I've never, in, in the 30 years I've been pastoring, I've never been a chaplain in the hospital. I've never been a chaplain for the police department. Uh, those are things I would like to do, but the opportunity just never has been, been available. So the chaplain at the hospital in Longs Peak called me and left a message at the church and said, there's a lady here whose son is on life support she said he was saved and baptized at, or she, he said, she, she said that he was baptized at your church a year ago, and she'd like you to come down and pray for him. And so I did. I, I came down. Now, he only came to our church one time. It was January 28th, 2023. That's it. A year and a half ago, came to church one service, got saved when he came, got baptized when he came, and then never, ever came back. Now, he struggles with a life of addictions, and so he's actually in the hospital because his addiction is possibly going to take his life. And so, but she asked me to come down and pray, and so I did, and I got to meet her for the first time, and then she had a friend with her, and um, there, she's 80, her friend's 79, her son is 52, 50, 50, uh, too. And so, um, and so, but at any rate, I, I got to talk to her about, um, both of them about salvation and, and they, and she said, I, you know, I've never prayed the prayer of salvation. Now she, she's been in church most all of her life, just different kind of churches. She got, uh, hooked up with a, um, worldwide church of God. And I believe it's, uh, Neil Armstrong back in the seventies and eighties and stuff like that. Y'all ever heard of the Worldwide Church of God? It's different than the Church of God or Church of Christ that's in town. It's called the Worldwide Church of God. And at any rate, she said, a lot of people think it's a cult. I didn't say to her, I do, but I do. I think it's a cult. It's, uh, it's not a good thing. It's just not a good thing. And so, but at uh, any rate, she, you know, her, her plan of salvation was to believe that Jesus died on the cross, get baptized, have hands laid on you, get filled with the Holy Ghost, I and mean, all of that combined is their act of salvation. I mean, it's all put together. And I, and I looked at her and I said, uh, have, have, you know, I gave her my testimony. <clears throat> have you ever prayed the prayer of salvation? Do you know what that is? And she goes, I don't know what that is. And I said, could I show you? And she said, yes. And I showed her and her friend both. And then they both sweetly prayed and asked the Lord to save them. And um, they had never done that before. And so, but they were happy to do it yesterday. Now, here's the thing. All of that was in preparation. Here's what the preparation was. And, and again, the preparation that God does is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Her son came to our church on January 28th, 2023. He was homeless at the time, came with his girlfriend, all because of the influence of Lori Pinley. And Lori Pinley uh, picked them up in her van, brought them to church, and then he got saved and baptized. And she stayed in touch with them 
moderately after that and got to uh, uh, talk to her uh, his mom and so his mom had Lori's phone number in her phone right so there was that communication there that was loose it wasn't like every week but it was it was nonetheless she followed up on him and everything well Lori ended up moving to Nebraska and so they don't really keep in contact with Lori on a regular basis of any kind but here's what happened <clears throat> the Lord put on that mother's heart why don't you call the pastor of the church that uh, your son got baptized out a year and a half ago and then it all just kind of all this preparation was going on right and so um, it's the same thing today with whoever it is that we're going to meet today are you listening God has already made preparation for your work to be done there is so much going on behind the scenes when we go out soul winning today we're just seeing you know like the tip of the iceberg you've heard that expression right the tip of the iceberg, but the iceberg goes well underwater. And so that's exactly what happens with soul winning. There is so much preparation that's already gone on. God has already made preparation for your work to be done. Number four, everything we need to perform the work has been provided. Are you listening? Hey, Joshua, why don't you just sit down next to your mom, buddy? Just sit down back against the pew, and that way you can just look at me, okay? This is a short sermon, short sermon, so you can, you can sit still for this amount of time. All right, everything that we need to perform, the work has already been provided. You have all that you need, all that you need to be able to see someone saved today. You, you have your testimony, you have, you have the Bible, you know, we're praying, you know, we're going to pray in just a minute. We've already prayed, but, but we got prayer. We got the Holy Spirit to guide us. And, and, and you've got knowledge on how to win someone to Christ. If you've been in this church for at least a year or more, you know the four points to the plan of salvation. You know they're in the book of Romans. You know how to win someone to Christ. Everything that we need to perform the work has already been provided. Number five, God has given each of us the ability to lead a soul to Christ. For you to think, I can't do it. I don't have the ability. You're wrong. That's the devil putting those thoughts in your head. Every one of us today, we are able to see someone saved. We really are. God has provided everything that you need to see someone saved. And then number five, God has given us the ability to lead a soul to Christ. Number six, the leading of a soul to Christ proves God's ability to use us, and it encourages us to win more souls. Leading a soul to Christ today, it will prove that God's ability to use us, and it encourages us to win more souls. You see, every time I see someone saved, I'm almost always saying something to God. God, I'm amazed that you even use me to see people saved, but it's so wonderful to know that God uses me. And then every time I see someone saved, you ready for this? It encourages me to see someone saved tomorrow. I mean, every single time. Um, God's, uh, the leading of a soul to Christ today, it proves God's ability to use us, and it encourages us to win more souls. Number seven, now, here's the main thought I was, I was wanting to bring home today. God has an assigned soul for us to lead to Christ today. God has an assigned soul for us to lead to Christ today. Now, listen carefully. It's not just that we're randomly going out there and just saying, all right, who here wants to be saved? And, you know, out in public, and then someone raises their hand. I do. Okay, I'll tell you how to be saved. They get saved, and we go home. No, there is an assigned soul. There is someone specific that God has for you to meet today. It's your assignment. I've often said this, and I believe this with all my heart. There are several people, several somebodies, maybe a lot, maybe a few, doesn't matter, whatever the number is, that you are the one that was intended for God to lead them to Christ. And if you don't do it, nobody else will. They're just not going to get, you know, nobody else is going to do it. There are certain people. You know, when I was on that plane flying to the Philippines, and I got to lead that archbishop to the Lord, I don't know that there would be any other opportunity that that man was going to have to get saved. I really do believe that I was assigned by God to witness to him so that he would get saved. Now, I'm just telling you, it's the same thing for you. 
Uh, um, there's somebody out there today that wants to get saved. And it's quite possible if you don't talk to them, if you don't give them a track, if you don't share the gospel, if you don't pray with them, whatever the case may be, they may not ever have anybody else that's going to do it. You know, I've often said this. In the 30 years I've been pastoring my church, I don't think there's been one person that has asked me at my door, you know, knocked on my door, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die? I've had two or three occasions that another Baptist, independent Baptist church in town has knocked on my door to invite my children to go to vacation Bible school just because I used to live in um, just a few blocks from here and they would come by and put flyers on doors, but they invited, you know, do you have any children that like to go to vacation Bible school? I mean, that's the closest thing to anything, you know. Other than that, I've had Mormons knock on my door, and of course, they don't have the right gospel. I've had Jehovah Witnesses knock on my door. They don't have the right gospel. But in the 30 years, I've had, I had one, one person who came to our church, one person that I can remember who came to our church, Asked me, do you know for sure if you died today that you'd go to heaven? And that's, that's someone that, you know, um, asked everybody. He just did. Every person he met, had a conversation with, he would ask them, do you know for sure? And how do you know for sure? And so when, when he first came to our church, the first time I met him, he, he, I met him on Saturday, and he moved here from Wyoming, and he was coming to church on Sunday morning. And so the person that told him about our church came down with him as he moved, and then uh, he took me over there to meet him, and that, he just straight up asked me, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? I asked everybody that. I said, yes, I do. And he goes, how do you know? <laughs> and so I gave him my testimony. But, uh, and I thank God for that, you know. Um, I had a lady that came to church visiting, um, oh, maybe six, seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago, and she, she was raised in the Church of Christ, and is what she told me. But during the invitation, I asked her, do you know for sure that you'll go to heaven? Has anybody ever showed you the verses, how you can know? And she said yes and promptly got offended at me and stood up and walked out <laughs> during the invitation with her boyfriend. And so, you know, that tells me that she's probably not saved. Because here's the thing, if you are saved and someone does ask you if you know for sure if you died today, you'd go to heaven. I mean, I'm glad that someone cares enough about me to actually ask me the question. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't get offended at that. I mean, good night. If someone has enough courage to ask me the question, it's because they care about me. I'm not going to get offended because I already am saved. But all these people that get offended, I, I really do question whether or not they legitimately are saved if they get offended at just asking the question. And, uh, but at any rate, God has an assigned soul for us to lead to Christ today. And it's quite possible if you don't tell them how to be saved, if you don't give them a gospel track, if you don't invite them to church, if you don't give them an opportunity to pray, whatever the case may be, whatever level it is, maybe nobody else will. You know, I, I think of Rob Stemmer. I was the one. I was the one, and I didn't do it in high school. And um, now I left. He stayed in Napa, and I think he had eight months to go. Eight months before he died. Now, is there anybody else that came to him in those eight months? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. But I still remember that day in May of 1987. He had a question about what was life all about. And the Holy Spirit said, tell him what life is all about. And I didn't. I didn't. I was scared. I'd never seen anybody saved yet. I used all the excuses that a lot of people do now. You know, like, I'm nervous. I don't know how to talk to people. I'm not confident. I'm this, that, and the other. I did all that excuse. And then he died. And as far as I know, he's, he's in hell right now. And I, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Now, I'm not going to live with any more Rob Simmers, though. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Uh, there's an assigned soul for me to lead to Christ today, and that's what I'm looking for. And there's an assigned soul for you. Next, number eight. Our good work for today is to find that person and to lead them to Christ. That's our good work. Find that person and help them to find out how to be saved. Again, you can help them get saved by giving them a gospel track, by inviting them to church and they come to church and get saved, or you sharing the gospel with them and then they get saved later, 
or you share the gospel with them and give them an opportunity to pray, and they do. They pray right with you, and they get saved. Those are four of the main ways that you can help someone get saved today, giving them a gospel track, inviting them to church, sharing the gospel, and then fourthly, giving them an opportunity right now to pray and receive Christ. I mean, that's, that's it. You know, um, a couple weeks ago, my wife met this lady. I, I hope you know where that address is. That'd be good to follow up on her today. The one that says, I was just looking at this church. Yeah. Oh, she was sick. Okay. But at any rate, she led her, uh, led her to the Lord, but her husband didn't pray. And then my wife just said, look, you know, please, and this track has the prayer. You can pray it. Now, it's possible that he did on his own. But he didn't with her, but his, his wife did with her. But you see, it doesn't matter when a person gets saved or how. If you give them the gospel with a gospel track or a gospel presentation or you invite them to church and they hear the gospel, they can still get saved and you had a hand in that. And so our good work for today is to find that person and to lead them to Christ. Number nine, think about this. We can give up before the work is completed or we can determine to complete this work. We can give up before the work is completed, or we can be determined to complete this work. See, it's so easy just to quit and give up. That's the easy thing. But if, you're, if you've got resolve in your heart, someone out there needs me today, and I'm not going to give up until I find them. I'm going to complete the work. And that's how your attitude's got to be. I'm not out just out there going, let's try. You've heard me say this so many times. I hate the word try. Nobody tries. You either do or you don't. There's no try. Absolutely no try. Trying just pacifies our failures. It gives us, it soothes our conscience, and it lets us feel better about not doing the thing that we're supposed to do. Nobody tries to go to church. You either go to church or you don't. Nobody tries to tithe. Stop saying, I tried to tithe. No, you don't. You either do it or you don't. That's it. No other, all of it, you do or don't. And so today, don't give up before the work is completed. Determine to complete this work. Number 10 and last, you will find joy and satisfaction in doing the work that God has assigned for you to do. Today, you can have joy and satisfaction. Not because you're sinless, not because you're everything you're supposed to be, not because you don't make mistakes, not because of anything other than the fact that God has assigned a job for you to do today and you did it. That's it. You absolutely did it. You will find joy and satisfaction in doing the work God has assigned for you to do. Listen, believe me, there is an assigned soul somewhere in Longmont that God has intended for you to meet and to help them to get saved. Now, let's do that. Let's do it. Let's not go out and piddle around. Let's not go out today and just talk to your partner. Let's not go out today and just put in 60 minutes and say, that's it, I put in 60 minutes. No, no, no. Let's go there saying, Lord, you have an assigned person for me to help lead to Christ today. Help me to do my job. And if you do it, joy and satisfaction. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for every person who showed up. I pray you bless them. And dear Lord, bless us with our efforts. I pray that every track people that we give to, they'll actually read them. People that we invite to church will actually come. And people that we'll share the gospel with will actually get saved in our presence. Father, use us in a great way today. Protect us from the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. Who's in the nursery today? Who is doing nursery duty? Miss Catherine, you're on the schedule? Is that right? Okay. So um, I'll get a partner for your boys. So. Oh, are they here? Oh, I thought they were in. Uh, I thought, okay. Okay, so you'll just go out, because you only have your son for the nursery. Okay, sounds good. And then, do you want me to get a partner for your boys then? Okay.